this morning we have two guest speakers, and uh, we have lays for you. So if Paul, Paul Mariko, Paul, you're going to speak now. So I'm going to just introducing Paul he's from beautiful Sedona, Arizona, and he is here to share what he's doing in his ministry there. So. Let me just bring up your friend, too. Are you, uh, Ron, my brother's name on earth again. Ron, come forward, please. And uh, he is our other guest. Uh, he's going to share just with us a little bit, too. But we want to uh, welcome him with a lay this morning, too. So welcome, Ron. All right. God bless you both. <laughs> I don't remember how long ago it was. I, I think it's maybe five or six years ago, maybe more. Time passes too quick. But um, I was supposed to go on a mission trip to India, and my visa didn't come through. So we thought, let's go to Hawaii, because I had everything covered at the church. And so uh, we looked online. It was whale season, and everything was booked in our price range, except for this little house right next door. <laughs> And on, and on the Airbnb, the VRBO site, it said, attractions, church. We thought, I have never seen that on a VRBO attraction list. So we said, well, that's great. So we came and, you know, we kind of wandered over here and explored. And and they show movies on the back. They still do that on the back side of the church. Not anymore. <laughs> anyway, then we go down to, is it Mahukona? The, yeah. And... Um, it was the only day that on our whole trip that the water was calm enough to snorkel. And Brother Steve was there helping a paraplegic woman get out and snorkel on a, on a boogie board so she could watch the fish. And Yumi, you know, there's that outdoor shower there. Yumi was taking a shower, and I was headed over to the shower, and she says, Samui this And I said, So this yo. She said, how they speak Japanese? <laughs> so we got, that's how we got to know each other. Uh, I guess six or six, I don't know, something like that. And then they hosted us. We came back again. So they think this is our third time here at the church. We love this church. And we love Pastor Steve and Yumi. They're very special to us. Um, just a real brief thing about where I came from and what God is doing presently at the little church that I pastor, we're in a very similar situation in that we get 4 million tourists a year. Our economy is totally dependent on tourism. And so the, but the people that live in the city are mostly retirees. And um, I come from a background where I got uh, graduated from high school, got, I went into a cult called the Children of God that had come through and and invited us, and we came actually to the Big Island, though they sent me to the Big Island to start a refuge because God was going to judge America, and this was the place where we were all going to go to to hide out. After about seven years in that cult, the Lord just, I was fighting the Holy Spirit because of the off direction it went. I was so grieved in my heart, I finally got quiet and let the Lord tell me I needed to get out of it. And we, we were up in the mountains of Japan and just got in the Word and got restored and got back on track. We came back to the U.S., and then the Lord called me to pastor. I couldn't, I, and I said, God, I can't do this because of my past. How, if I was so deceived before, what, you know, how do I have any right to teach anybody? And the Lord just spoke to my heart and said, if you're willing, I can use you. Today, in the Sunday school lesson, I got a word from the Lord. I don't know what you think about that. Maybe something the Holy Spirit spoke to my mind. However, all right, if, if you got a bowl, God can fill it till it overflows. If the bowl's cracked, he can pour right through it. And God uses broken things. And I just feel like God wants to say to somebody here today, if you feel like you're broken and God can't use you, he's the one. You're the one he's looking for. 
because it's only when you realize you can't do it. Like we were talking about this morning from John 15, then he can use you because you're humble and you're broken and you know everything that good that comes from it is from him and he gets all the glory. So after 20 years at this church, full of older people, which is great, doing mostly funerals, not very many weddings, all of a sudden, all of these young new age kids are coming. From last August, they started coming and wanting to be baptized. And on Wednesday night, we, they wanted to sing, they want to learn worship songs. So we worship for about an hour, then we feed them, and then we do a Bible study. Last Wednesday, it was so packed, we're going to have to move to a bigger room. There was 40 people there and nine online. And these people are homeless. They're broken from their bad situations with their families. Some of them are addicted to drugs, but they want to know about Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we're just praising God that he uses broken things for his glory. And um, Brother Ron attended the church, became one of our elders, and God moved his heart to start a ministry. And he'll tell you about that. Well, first, I, I just like to say that uh, we are so blessed to worship with you and be here with you at uh, Kahala Baptist. That uh, we thank you. Uh, it's a irresistible church, and, and and that's really what what our ministry has been all about. We have a, a daughter who has epilepsy and autism. And, uh, you know, we had uh, kind of a rude awakening. You know, we were certainly went to church every day, and but we were not really followers of Jesus Christ. And uh, when things got bad uh, at 18 months of age, she started having uncontrollable seizures. And uh, we were in the hospital for about 10 days, and uh, the doctors took off their lab coats and sat down with us, and we knew that was really bad news. Um, and they said, uh, you might want to bring your family in because we don't think she's going to survive. And uh, the Lord had, uh, they had one little medicine that was not very effective that they were going to try. And to make a long story short, they gave that to her and uh, seizure stopped. Next day we were discharged. And she has, she's been struggled, struggling with uh, epilepsy and autism, the learning disability. And um we kind of went around the country trying to find really great people and specialists, and we prayed to God for a cure for eight years, and finally it just came upon us that, uh, you know, I was reading 2 Corinthians 12, 9, my grace is sufficient for you, my power is made perfect in weakness, and it just made us realize at that time that God wasn't taking that away because he had plans for us. And Aaron, Aaron, uh, so we... we uh, went to Wayside, and we uh, were sitting in the back. We weren't sure about this church, but, you know, Paul was an expository preacher, and it was a small church, and we were sitting at the back, and we noticed these people up front, and they were they were rocking in there in the pew, and one was singing about, you know, three words behind everybody else, and another person was directing the worship team, and we, Eileen and I just looked at that, and we realized that that was a local residential program for developmentally disabled adults, and we looked at the back of everyone's head, and they were all worshiping. They weren't paying any attention to the distractions and, and all of that. And Eileen and I just looked at each other and said, uh, we found our home. So they, they sent us out. We found uh, call, uh, God calling us to uh, give what we had learned to other families. So we have a ministry called Leap of Faith Learning. And uh, it is it is really a developing special ministry for children that have learning disabilities. And we started uh, about six years ago with a Bible study because we have parents that, even if they're believers, uh, they have a lot of questions for God. Like, how could a loving God allow this to happen to my beautiful baby? And uh, so we, we spent two years going through Scripture to just say, how does God look at that child and look at disability? And uh, we've been meeting for eight, eight years now, I guess. Um, so we also do uh, training because we have found in our experience that churches are not necessarily welcoming 
of people with disabilities, and a lot of our families have had to go to other churches because they didn't feel welcome. So we, we train um, pastors, ministry leaders, and volunteers to open their doors and open their hearts to these families and provide support so that they can worship. And i just tell you one, one story about um, we, we started a program called Super Kids, and that's children's church, much like yours, uh, except all of ours are with learning disabilities. And these kids, you know, some of them, I'm, I'm not a young man, but I have to have my sneakers on because we're running all over the place because some of them are escape artists. Um, some of them are nonverbal. They don't communicate. Uh, they just have meltdowns. Um, but what we did, we wanted to provide a safe place where they could hear about Jesus, the only hope, and the parents could have 90 minutes of time to just worship the Lord. And uh, Jody brought Hadley, who is nonverbal and has frequent meltdowns and is always looking for a way out to escape. And we watched, we kept working with her to say, let us take your child. She'll be safe. You go worship. And she allowed us to do that one Sunday. And she came back with tears in her eyes saying, that's the first time in six years that I've been able to worship the Lord. And uh, we've been growing ever since. We were up to six before COVID, and uh, we have about 12 families that are interested in uh, super kids. So that's basically what we did, and it's all the, the Holy Spirit's leading. So, Eileen, would you come up? Yes. I'm going to pray into this. Yeah, let's pray for Ron and uh, Eileen. Thank you for uh, thank you for sharing, and, and thank you uh, for being sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, it was just something that the Lord has led you into, and uh, we're so grateful for your uh, your witness and your testimony to, to those that you're ministering to and to the body of Christ. And uh, we want. To, uh, I don't know if you can do some online training or whatever, but uh, we want to uh, go for it. And uh, we want to partner with you in prayer. And we begin now. Lord, we, uh, we thank you for Ron and Eileen. We thank you, Father, for uh, their, their uh, commitment to you, their love for their daughter, Erin. Lord, we lift her up to you, and we pray, God, that you continue to bless her. Lord, that you spared her life. And she's alive and well today. We pray, God, for your continued blessing upon her life and upon Ron and Eileen as they parent her and as they shepherd uh, this ministry and uh, the lives of, of those, the least of, of these, you said. Uh, when we, we do these two things to the least of these, we do them as unto you. So thank you, Lord. Bless Ron and Eileen in their marriage and in their ministry together and uh, the ministry of Leap of Faith. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Did you hear that? Aaron graduated from college with a teaching degree. Praise God. Wow. 